So today I'm going to be in the business of surprises a little bit. Our next speaker is the Alumni Association endowed speaker. And it seemed to me that an alum should introduce her. So it is my uh, unknown to Mary Catherine, of course. So an alum who knows her quite well is going to come out and introduce her. Please welcome Katie Mitchell, the director of the Brunel University Writing Center. <laughs> Um, I'm honored today, as Dr. Dobkins just said, to introduce this year's Alumni Association Endowed Guest Speaker. Ms. Mary Catherine Wells has a list of professional accolades that's pretty long. Uh, the story of her career began about 15 years ago with Turnberry Associates in Destin, Florida, where she was the marketing director for Destin Commons. That then took her to Las Vegas, where she continued for a while in the role of marketing specialty shopping and dining centers. She eventually came home to us in Atlanta, and she started to serve there as the marketing director of the Shops Buckhead Atlanta, where she launched the development from its very beginnings and cemented its place in the luxury shopping and dining scene here in Atlanta, and then went on to grace the Atlantan Magazine, where she was profiled as one of six top entrepreneurs under 40. But her biggest career move came last year when she founded the Wells Agency. It's her own company born of her own passions to help businesses grow with her trademark blend of unique innovation in branding, marketing, digital media, and events. I'm lucky to call Mary Catherine a good friend, and many of you alums and students are lucky to call her a fellow Brunel sister. She and I first met 18 years ago. Can you believe that, 18? Uh, she was actually one of the first faces that I saw on my first day of class as a Brunel student. We had a dance class together, you remember, with Vinka Screen. I recognized in her instantly these same characteristics that have carried her so far. Grace and charm and intelligence, but above all, an infectious energy that can motivate anybody to reach higher and do better. So above all, uh, beyond all of that, I would say she's always a champion of other women as well. She's celebrating and encouraging our successes alongside her own, which makes her a perfect speaker for today. So I'm excited that I get to share her with you for a little bit, and you can experience some of that infectious energy. So Ms. Mary Catherine Wells. Hello there. I didn't expect to um, be so emotional with the beautiful background of Catherine and her family and her grandmother, and they're all here today to be able to um, partake in that really special moment, and then to be able to be introduced to someone that is not only a friend and a sister, but I also admire so much. Um, this isn't the way that most people want to start a speech off when you're kind of emotional, but <laughs> we're going to roll with it today. We all have milestones and pivot points in our lives that, when looking back, define our successes. I recently entered one a couple of days ago uh, when I was least expecting it. As I lean in and embrace this new chapter in my life, I wondered, would I rather have luck or skill on my side? Would you rather be lucky or would you rather be very skillful in what you do? So I'm going to ask the audience right now, who would rather be lucky? Raise your hands. Who would rather be skillful? Raise your hand. All right. That was pretty unanimous. I submit to you today that it takes a bit of both to be successful, that success and luck are both intertwined. And looking back on my journey thus far, I have identified five qualities of intertwined luck and skill that have helped me on my quest for success. Number one, courage. Without fear, there is no courage. I earned my degree in musical theater from Brunel University in the year 2000. Shortly thereafter, I was lucky. I got a great job landing a gig in Panama City Beach, Florida. But that was a seasonal gig and didn't bring in much money. I wanted more and was dreaming of performing on a bigger stage. One day, my mom and I attended a theme park convention where the one and only Dolly Parton was speaking. Y'all like Dolly Parton, right? 
The audience was full of big wigs and executives, theme park owners. So my mom and I were clearly not in the right place. But Dolly was an inspiration. She told her rags to riches story and the success of her journey, and then she opened up to the audience for a Q&A session. I'll never forget my mom looking at me and saying, Mary Catherine, this is it. This is your shot. Take it. Um, I did have my headshot and resume with me, um, but did I actually have the courage to do this? To potentially embarrass myself in front of all of these business executives? Or did I really want to regret not taking my shot? Now keep in mind, like I said, there is no courage without fear, and I was absolutely scared to death. But my hand shot up out of nowhere. And the next thing I remember, Dolly Parton was looking at me and invited me to come up on stage with her. By the way, there was 500 business executives that I was so scared of, they all stood up and gave me a standing ovation. I personally handed Dolly my resume, and the next week, I got a personal call from her assistant. She invited me to come audition for a role, and I got it. The next thing you know, I was performing on Dolly Parton's stage at the Dollywood theme park. As women, we often find ourselves in places where we have to make personal decisions to set us up for success. I was courageous. I was assertive. I knew what I wanted, and I went after it. And it resulted in giving me the job of my dreams at that time. So was this luck or skill? What I'm proposing is that this was a quality called courage. Number two, network. Around the age of 23, I hit a pivot point. I had fulfilled my dreams of being a performer and was ready to seek a new adventure. By networking over the years, I had built a strong root system. Through that root system came an opportunity to interview for the position of director of marketing for the shops at Destin Commons in Destin, Florida. It was a huge position and the competition was really steep. Long story short, I literally acted my way through the interview. <laughs> Who knew it would take me leaving the theater to actually perform my best role yet? <laughs> I landed the position. I worked really hard and worked really long hours. I identified mentors in the marketing arena and absorbed their knowledge like a sponge. But at the same time, I built friendships, relationships, thus continuing to network, the second quality. Number three, keep a growth mindset. Life was great. I had been in Destin for five years and I loved it. I had just bought my first house when, of course, I hit my next life pivot point. The company I'd been working for had opened a new shopping center on the Strip in Las Vegas, Nevada. And they suddenly and unexpectedly needed a director of marketing and they needed her fast. My phone rang and I was offered the job. Knowing that this was an opportunity of a lifetime to advance my career and also a thing or two about blackjack, I had a growth mindset. I was open to this new opportunity and was on the next plane to Las Vegas. I was excited and jumped headfirst into my new position, leading my marketing team and learning a completely new and complex market. And did I mention that this was in 2008, the Great Recession as we knew it? It was. That said, there was a lot at stake and there was a lot of pressure. The first six months in Vegas were really tough and were really lonely. I didn't know a single person. My team members would ask me to join them for happy hours and dinners, but I was really working hard to position myself as their leader and not their peer, so I never accepted. Being a leader is one of the hardest roles out there, and as women, we have to sacrifice and work hard to be taken seriously. As their leader, I had to make a decision that would set me and my team up for success. The easy road would have been to give in and go party, and by the way, I'm pretty good at partying, um, but however, I had to take the, lo the road less traveled by. I learned to spend time with myself, I took up new hobbies, I learned to cook, and I also 
learned a whole new level of self-discipline. The Las Vegas experience taught me to have a growth mindset, to be open to personal growth, therefore excelling in my professionalism. Number four, be persistent. After four memorable years in Las Vegas, I longed to be back in the South and close to my family. I had also just learned of a new luxury shopping center that was opening up in Buckhead, Atlanta. This was my dream job, a shopping center in Buckhead, Atlanta, close to my family. I was born and raised here. This was it. My life was going to be complete. I planned on interviewing for the job, landing the job, and then retiring from the job in about 20 years or so. Well, things did not go that smoothly. After seven months of interviewing, they called me to tell me I was not what they were looking for. I was devastated. I knew that I had the skill set, but apparently I had zero luck on my side. Then one day, I woke up determined. I wrote them an email telling them it was a pleasure to meet them and that I wanted to remind them one last time that I was the most qualified person for this position and that I was willing and able to meet them whenever and wherever. It worked. The CEO was in town. But unfortunately, the day of the meeting, he was running behind. He was courteous, shook my hand, and told me that he had to rush to the airport to head back to California. My last opportunity to be hired was literally walking out the door. And that's whenever I looked at him and said, wait a minute, I can go with you to the airport. He looked at me and said, all right, let's go. So he interviewed me on the way to the airport, and the evening ended with him giving me a tour of his private jet and me looking at him in the eyes and saying, you need me. I am the most qualified person for this position. You need me, hire me. He looked at me and said, you know what? You're right, you're hired. This is persistence. I was patient, I stayed strong, I was tough, and I snapped back. I made my own luck. And that's where I am today. After three years working in Buckhead, I decided it was time to move on and tap into my entrepreneurial spirit. Take it to the very next level. I now run a successful marketing firm, The Wells Agency, in which I learned took a lot of courage. The more courage you show, the luckier you become. Through networking, I secured my first handful of clients. The more you put yourself out there, the more likely you are to fortunate encounters. And talk about a growth mindset. There are all things that we do not like to do in life, and especially when you're starting a new company. Things like prospecting, routine changes. What I learned to do is to attach a positive emotion to these negative and hard actions. Like you have to do whenever you work out. Nobody likes to work out. Who in here actually likes to work out? All right, you do because you attach a positive feeling to working out. See, it works. <laughs> and persistence is key when you're constantly trying to secure new clients, pay bills, and buy new shoes. And by the way, it's always good to have a little luck on your side to help you find the perfect pair. All right, so now we're going to take what I call a selfie break. So I'm going to take a selfie with everyone in the class, and I'm going to post this on my new The Wells Agency Instagram. So is everybody in? Will everybody smile and put your hands up or something fun so it looks like y'all are engaged? Ready? Thank you. Sorry for that little plug. <laughs> All right. So in closing, I would like to give a special thank you to the educators and staff at Brunel University. Brunel sets young women up for success. They not only teach the necessary knowledge and skills for your choosing career to help you compete in today's competitive landscape, but they also teach women to be confident in themselves and their abilities to join forces with other women instead of competing, to be self-aware 
and to engage in the greatness of others. Thank you.